Oh my God. Hey. To anybody who might be there. Welcome to Super Sunday. <laughs> I'm having Oprah vibes now. Don't do that. Yes. I'm going to have some crackpot <laughs> spiritual guru on to discuss something. <laughs> we should indeed. Let's really switch it up. Do you know how many times I've like looked at certain people that do these like guru things and been like, you know, I'm not a wholly unattractive white woman. I can speak in a soothing voice. Why do I have morals that keep me from? <laughs> that could be your gimmick. That could be your shtick. That could be your I mean, way to the path I mean, to wealth. I feel like I could become a cult leader if I really Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. You would just have to like lighten your hair just a little bit. Maybe get some highlights to yeah. really sell it. To really sell yeah. it. If I could become like a blonde... Though, you know, the teal swan has got the henna dyed hair. So maybe I just. That's what I'm saying. Like just, just highlights, you know, just lighten it a little Something. bit. Just a little lift, a little lift. Somehow mm -hmm. we'd have to like, uh, like just remove all morals from like my moral compass. And basically, then basically. We could, we could... Are they still doing electric shock therapy? Are they still doing that? Oh, yeah, they still do that. Yeah, maybe I can yeah. shock it out of my yeah, brain. Exactly, exactly. We got a plan. <laughs> we got a plan. How <laughs> gonna make millions, damn it. <laughs> Gotta make sure that when when things start to get rough, I gotta find somewhere without an extradition treaty. Just go there. Boom. You know, there there's you a go. Whole, there's a whole there you go. And then just revert back to how you used to look, and nobody, will, no one will be the wiser. No one. No Talk one. My regular. It's mean funny voice. because it's true. It is true. It's, it's funny totally because it. it's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm a little old now, though. I should have started like in my mid twenties. <sighs> no, I feel like. This is <laughs> Excuse me. potentially the right age yeah. for a yes for a particular category of people. Even the as ones, a woman, yes, because here's why: it is for the ones who never really quite found their sense of self and are Ooh. still seeking someone to help guide them to help them figure out who am I, what's my purpose, so I can pick up the dregs. Like the, the left people but left a, behind, but it's a lot of dregs though. It's a lot. That's like true. it's a huge That's number. <laughs> All right. So Talk if I'm about, not here anymore, it's because I yes, started exactly. my cult. Exactly. So exactly. Finally not have to work and live in the lap of luxury. Right. And then when it all comes crumbling down, you write a book about it and then make more millions off the book. Mm -hmm. Hello. And then mm -hmm. you do workshops mm -hmm. to help people so they don't fall into the trap. Exactly. Just, just then I become the counselor to get people out exactly. of Exactly. See, you go Stephen from being a terrible person to the helper. This is the trajectory of how it all works. Mm, <laughs> we got this planned. I'll bring you along for the ride. You know what's so funny? <laughs> if this hasn't been done a thousand times before, we wouldn't even know how to like, this is why it's so easy to piece it together. It's been done I've watched so many too times. many documentaries about this. I've exactly. got a plan in order. Exactly. <laughs> Oh man, welcome to Sunday. Welcome to Sunday. Welcome to a TBR load of laughs. Yes. I that one day somebody will join us on. Well, they, you know, get, get with it, people. Get get in here. <laughs> You're missing the fun. Get in here. I'm you kind of excited. You could be a founding cult member. <laughs> you could. You could. Write your checks too. <laughs> I have a P.O. box. Cash app us, Venmo, all of the good stuff. So, yeah, uh, I'm excited about today's live. Me too. Yeah. I feel like I've been going live a lot, which is kind of fun. I Yeah, you have been. I think that's great. Yeah. Because you're getting in a nice little writing rhythm, it seems like. Yeah. So you're building up some consistency for yourself, which is what you were struggling to do, especially at the height of the, height pandemic, of the pandemic when you had just really no time it's just fumes everything like yeah just fumes. there what was time so now you're getting into a nice little groove there yeah yeah, yeah. now That's if i can only you. learn to write above a fourth grade level that would be great oh <laughs> please and wait when is nano again nano's november yeah all in november okay cool yeah I don't think I'm going to do it like, so traditionally it's got a very strict structure, which is that you write 50,000 words in 30 days, 31 days, however many days are in November. Oh, okay. And I don't think that's, that's not really feasible. Um, okay. I almost got there. Plus I'm not ready to like, I want, I'm not ready to abandon this work and project and start a whole new one. Makes sense. So I've got about 47 something written already. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just going to try to use all of the 
writing sprints and things that are happening in like mm-hmm. the writing community online uh, during Nano to edit and finish because I really am like somewhere just on the the precipice of the third act of this book and yeah. I need to finish drafting it so that I can actually make it good. Okay. Maybe okay. when I get a few chapters, you know, like in a million years when those I have a couple chapters that aren't awful, I'll let you see it. I'm excited. Right now it's terrible. I have a feeling it's just going to read like a CW show. And sometimes I feel like because Ooh. we read so many like um, highbrow, like super smart books that I feel really inadequate writing oh. this. But then I remember how much people love... Just Den of Vipers. Yeah. And like like for the freaking Mindfuck series is so poorly written. Or and the Shadow so, series. People yeah, like people, love it. Yeah. So like I'm like trying to be kind on myself, but I think you that need that's to hard. be. I know it is hard, but just try your best to not put that kind of pressure. Honestly, dropping Oscar Wilde into the Hemingway editor and seeing that he also writes at fourth grade level made me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I See? was like, awesome. We're good. See? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me and Oscar. Yeah. I think I think you're doing really well. I mean, look, the, the bottom line is really you want to get this book done. In order to do it, you got to be consistent mm-hmm. and you've built some consistency into your schedule. So regardless of all the other stuff, you're on the right track to getting yeah. to the place you want to be, which is yeah. having a completed book. Yeah. And then and it's not the easy. Whole- it's not easy. And then comes the whole debacle of trying to figure out how to self-pub. One day we yeah. should have an episode about <laughs> self-pub. But hang on a minute. So is that your goal? Did you are you just automatically boom? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna self-pub. I'm not gonna try to yeah. go the traditional route. Okay. Yeah. I mean, unless what, what if you found an indie publisher that you really like? Would you yeah. submit to them? Yeah. But not okay. I don't think I'd be like, hey Tor, do you want my terrible book i mean hell if your book you know gets published and does well anyway they're going to come to you anyway yeah this is what they do now so that's true i don't think that i think that the landscape's very different than when self-pub was like first (sighs) oh heck yeah so yeah but i would really like to do an episode where we talk about self-publishing and um because it's, it's very interesting to me, the whole world of, of self-pub. And like, I didn't realize that you have to buy an ISBN. And then I didn't realize the like ISBNs in the U.S. are like 50, 60 percent higher than if you go to like Australia. Um, so there's and we then the, interviews, talk to some. Yeah. And the margin and UK based self-pub authors. And the margins you know? are interesting. I was watching somebody's TikTok and it's like the margins on selling your book on TikTok are higher than going through Ingram Sparks, which is like the distributor for yeah. if you want to go into like bookstores yeah. or at least for this one author they were. Is there like a strategy? Like how? Like I have so many questions. I think it would be really fascinating to to Ooh. even just, like make a panel of people that so wait so they were saying find like, out what they're selling doing. directly like yeah so they were saying saying get... that they they have their books on Amazon uh huh and their margins are higher like they make more money on their books selling on Amazon which is like counterintuitive because everybody normally says or all I've ever heard before is like you know, don't buy from Amazon because Amazon loses money. Right. And it's in, that was like, oh, interesting. Is it just that one indie author that right. I was watching? Or is this something that everybody sees? Like, are the fees for Ingram Sparks so high that you just end up making literally pennies on the dollar for your book? Right. Oh, this is very interesting. Isn't that like we need to have this conversation? Oh, we absolutely we need do. To, like, get I have like a couple people in my head that we could reach out to. And talk to. We absolutely. I think it would be do. really interesting to have just like literally a little panel, like a self help yes. panel, and just hit people with our questions. I so yeah. We're just gonna we're just gonna vomit a bunch of questions at you, and we want to know what's the deal. What's skinny? for real? <laughs> oh yeah, we're making that happen. Stay tuned, uh-huh. folks. That's coming up. It's fascinating. That's coming up. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. All right. Well, sipping your tea. 
Hmm. Well, <laughs> ma'am, what have you been reading or what have you just finished? Well, um, I am currently reading Everyone Knows Your Mother is a Witch by Riv Rivka Galchin. I can't say I, uh, that is said wrong. So I kept seeing this all over my Instagram feed. Mm -hmm. And I realized like recently because it's spooky season. Mm -hmm. And so Picador, I think, is who publishes it here in the States. And so, like, every other feed, it, like, it's just constantly, somehow in every carousel, there's this yeah. there's, And I realized that I own it. <laughs> so I was like, let me. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Let me read it. So, like, this is the book. Do you remember I went to the book bar in a while back? And we didn't realize it was closing in, like, two minutes. So oh, yes. Had, like, supermarket sweeps of, yes. of, of book buying. So, I, this was literally the book I had in my hand when the lady was like, we're closing. And so I ran <laughs> and, and like had her tally up my books so I could do it. And so like, here we are. Uh, so it's actually interesting so far. It is kind of what I, it's kind of like a more approachable mm -hmm. The Manning Tree Witches. Do you remember that book? I that do. That came out recently? I do. So this is about a woman who gets accused of being a witch. And you're going through her trial and you're going through all of the things mm -hmm. her, like her family and the thoughts and what happens sort of when you get accused of being a witch. But it's done in a much more approachable and easy to digest and understand manner yeah. than I think the Manning Tree Witches was done. The Manning Tree Witches is very good. Yeah. But it's, 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 it's stylistically, it's, it's not going to be something that everybody's going to be able to gravitate towards. Yeah. So like this, I feel like if you tried to get into the Manning Tree Witches and you were like, oh no, I can't try this book. It's really, it's really interesting so far. Mm -hmm. And I, and I like our main character. I think she's funny. Like <laughs> she's like you know, this illiterate old lady that everyone keeps trying to, like one woman was annoyed with her. So of course she's like, she's a witch. And that turns into a whole thing. And like. It's just, it's crazy that, you know, it's all the things that, you know, we know about with witch hunts and all of that, you know, women yeah. of any, with any sort of intellect or non-biblical understanding of the world, mm -hmm. you know, like scientific understanding, I guess is what I mean, before there's any idea of what science is, you know, if you make a tincture to help somebody, but then you somehow also still get sick, suddenly you're a witch instead right. of helping, you were poisoning them, exactly. you know, that whole thing that whole chestnut that, that right. women can't get escape from you know so it's yeah not the best description of this book but i think I, yeah i it's, feel like russell has talked about that book and talked about enjoying that book i feel like he talked about the manning tree witches but he probably he also did talked about he did this. talk about that book he as may well. have also talked about this this was yeah, because I feel like the Manning Tree Witches was a little bit harder to connect with, at least for me. Yeah, I remember you talking about that when you were as you were reading it. It was hard because like I enjoyed it, but I also didn't. There was a distance yeah. between me and the text. And this is a lot more um it's just a lot easier to to get into and, and connect with for me. Yeah. So I feel like there's probably other people that felt that way. And this if you want that kind of story, right. this is a good alternative. Huh, interesting. Okay. And it's spooky season. It is spooky season. And I gotta tell you, like my 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 first two uh spooky reads were just a complete dud. Oh yeah, you had like a rough start to spooky season. I've been just like living my best life over here, and you're like, yeah. I hate these books. I don't know why I made you like Smeagol, but yeah, I hate them. Yeah, the I mean, you know, it, it turned <laughs> around, it turned around for sure. But the first two I was like, oh. I'm going to talk about one. Mm -hmm. So one is a book that I've had on my shelves for at least three years, and it's Unraveling Oliver by Liz Nugent. Okay, I didn't even know what that was when you were telling me about it. It's been on my shelves for a long time, and I was like, you know what? This year, I'm going to read it because honestly, when I, you know, skimmed the synopsis when I first bought it, I was like, I think, I think this is going to be like the one for me. So. Oliver, we open with Oliver. And then it wasn't. <laughs> okay. It's Oliver's like when we chose married. our husbands. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> Ooh. Although, <laughs> sometimes you know you're doing the wrong thing at the time you're doing it. And you just do it and anyway. You still do you, it. You still do it. Uh, that's called being stupid, people. <laughs> that's all, all right. right. So we uh, open with Oliver. He's married and he's uh, gotten into um, a there's been a domestic violence incident, okay, with he and his wife, and 
he did not murder her, but she's basically comatose. And so this book goes between Oliver talking about his past, how he grew up, you know, things he dealt with with his father. And it also goes through hearing from various people um, from Oliver's life. And they describe like what their relationship was with him, uh, how he acted, things like that. It almost felt like a documentary, you know, when mm -hmm. it, it, there's a documentary about a murderer or, a, you know, almost murderer. And you're like talking to all these people from their past, you know, to kind of like figure out were what there happens? signs, right? Were there signs <laughs> that we all miss something? That's kind of what this was like. And I just got to be so brutally honest and tell you that this just did not hit for me. Something about, something about this book just felt very blah. Mm. But, but it should have, like, with how this book is built, it, it should have been something that I was totally down for. But it wasn't. It just, it did not click for me. It was, I don't really know what it was. I It, it wasn't pacing. I think the story was there, but it just did not grab me enough for me to really have any real interest in what was going on. It's not that it was too slow or too fast. It wasn't any of did that, but listen to something it? wasn't clicking. Did you listen to it? Yeah. Do you think that was the audiobook? No, I thought the audiobook was pretty good. I was at work and, you know, I knew this was something that I could listen to while I'm still working. Mm -hmm. um, so the audiobook was good, but I don't know. It was just fine. I, but I I do think a lot of people would like this book. I just think it didn't click for me. I, but I, I haven't nailed down the exact but, reason. But I do think a lot of people would like it. So I'm still recommending it. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that happens often where, you know... They just don't work for one person and then some other person. Yeah, because okay. like I said, you know, the you story can see is the there. merit in the story. So yes, yes, yeah. yeah. So awesome. that was Unraveling Oliver by Liz Nugent. Oh well, they all can't be winners. They sure can't because neither was the truth. But that's a conversation <laughs> for another day. I'm very curious about your um, experience with the troop, and I've had it on my shelves for a while. And I need to see how I like it. Because after I yeah. finished Nos Nosferatu, I was like, well, is this one going to be good? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I get angry when I see people be like, Nosferatu is just like, it's this amazing. Boppity, boppity, boopity. Everyone says that. That's Joe Hill, right? Mm -hmm. I've only read one Joe Hill book. And that was, oh, the title was escaping me. Something, something box. Heart shape oh. box. Yeah. Um, I just, I just, my question to, did everybody just miss the blatant misogyny? Is that why you like it? Cause you I didn't... don't think anyone cares about that. <laughs> Probably because it's so prevalent in books anyway. It's like, ah, oh, that's just another, you know, I know but whatever. sometimes it's irritating to me. Some people yeah. do it in a way that's so irritating. Well, that's true too. That's true too. Yeah. Anyway, that's not why we're here. I've, I've done a whole vlog on that. We don't need to go any further. I know. On that, on that I know. We're you here to talk it. about. I didn't the one on loneliness, which, you know, it took me a while to even start. I just could not. I was reading so many other things that I was just mm -hmm. so into, and it was just really hard to pick this up. But once I did, I was in it yeah. to win it. I guess I could see it. Because also, like, this is a very different story than most of the stories we've been reading, really, mm -hmm. I think, both of us. Especially going into the beginning of, like, October. As we got closer to October, we were reading a lot more, like, seasonal reads. And yeah. And, you know, I'm still, I'm still, like... I'm doing good with my arcs. I'm reading my arcs. So, yeah. But I have I, quite a few pages dog-eared in here. I have a lot of tabs. I One of our listeners this... just passed out when I said dog-eared. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do that as well sometimes. It depends on if yeah. I have flags nearby. <laughs> yeah, which um, I didn't for the whole time reading this book for whatever reason. But, yeah. Yeah. So, what were your initial impressions reading The Well of Loneliness? And I'm going to learn how to make words articulate with my mouth while, while you do that. <laughs> my initial impression uh, is that it was a very well-written story. I had a very intense feeling that something just dreadful was going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm glad it didn't happen. Like I thought, I was thinking some really bad things. I, I thought I was going to get to the end and be just completely devastated in a way there was no coming back from. 
Yeah. And I'm really happy it didn't end in the way that I thought it was going to end. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed the story. It was yeah. very heartbreaking though. It is very, very frustrating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I knew that there was going to be no happy ending because that is how these stories traditionally have been written. Right. Um, and most queer characters um, are, are somehow um, tragic in, mm -hmm. you know, more classic literature. I, you know, yeah. if I think about Mrs. Danvers and Rebecca, which you've never read and you need to read, she is, um, and even Rebecca is a little bit, um, there's, there's a question of whether or not she has um, uh, affairs with women as, as in addition to men. So it's, those characters are both very tragic. They meet tragic ends. They have, they don't end up having a happily ever after or yeah. happily for now or even a content mm -hmm. character arc. And so I knew that was coming. I still was, I mean, you want it to work for Stephen and um, Mary, yeah. right? Mary. Mary. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you want it to work out for them, yeah. but you know how much the cards are stacked against them. And I think that though there are things in this book that don't really hold up well over time, I mean, mm -hmm. the way that certain racist statements just like, come out of nowhere and punch oh, you in the yeah. face. Oh, yeah. I got that like, part and I was like, oh, this is what Alyssa was talking because about. Because there okay. is, it is not a, like, <laughs> it is, and there's, like, two moments where that happens. And, like, yeah. and they're just so sort of over the top, I feel like. And, mm. the, and it hasn't existed throughout most of the story. So yes. that when it comes, it's startling. Right. Because you forget that even though you're talking about another marginalized group, Mm -hmm. There's still hierarchy of marginalized groups. Well, it's still a particular time. Yes. So mm -hmm. you're still in the 1920s. Exactly. And even though you are a queer woman, you are still a white queer woman. <laughs> so you're going to have... Certain... Who has means? Who has, Who means? has means? So you have certain yeah. feelings, <laughs> thoughts, <laughs> inclinations exactly. uh, towards other people in this world. So it's it's... You know, it was shocking for me. It was, it was. I, I mean, it was out of nowhere. I mean, it was I, just I, I like, totally get what you were saying. You were it was like, like left we're, we're just going along, and all of a sudden, it's like you know, blah in, in your what? face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you chose to drop that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a little alarming. It was alarming. It yeah. was abrasive. I mean, um, I would have been more alarmed had you not already kind of like given you a heads know, up like, that it was coming. Something's coming. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I mean, it does remind you that this is what the times were like. That oh, yeah. It, it was just so a modern, like a, a current reader, like a, a, during that time period, mm -hmm. probably wouldn't have been shocked by oh, no, that at statement at all. They were be so wrapped up in like the lesbianism of it all. And right. that would be the thing that would have them clutching their mm -hmm. pearls. Who cares that you're being racist? Exactly. Lesbians. Exactly. What about these two ladies? <laughs> yeah. About these lesbians. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah. I, I mean, Stephen was just so tragic to me. Um, I, I felt so bad for her, but I do love how Radcliffe Hall because uh, this is sort of mirroring her own life experience. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like I loved the, the discussion of wanting and feeling like they're a man. And that it's not just having uh, a desire for another woman. She exactly. is really dealing with uh, things that we talk about so much today, like they are newfangled ideas. Mm -hmm. And that we have all these new terms for. But yeah. I mean, this is like a hundred years ago and people were still like this because it's not yep. new for exactly because as I was reading it, I was like, wow, like this is an old ass book, but it feels so timely. Mm -hmm. It feels so right now because it is also right now. Mm -hmm. And um, I really, well, let, let's, let's, let's start at, at the beginning because mm -hmm. I have so many complicated feelings about the dad. Oh, and the mother. Oh, the mother makes me angry. The um, mother really hurt me. The mother really stabbed me in my heart. And I just, I, but the dad, I, mm. But I, like, at least she had her dad, you know? Her dad tried mm. to understand her 
and gave her like some sort of safe haven. I think I mean he, he gave did her understand confidence. Her. He did understand her. Mm -hmm. You know, he did more than try. He absolutely understood and accepted her, and he tried his best to put her in a position where she would be comfortable with herself and would have some semblance of a good life. Yeah. But the thing that really, and I guess I kind of, it, although it was frustrating, I, I felt bad for him because while he fully understood his daughter, he had such a hard time trying to figure out, well, now how do I tell her mother about this? How do I talk to my wife about this? And as we see in this book, he's he made certain decisions on a couple occasions where he had an opportunity to really broach this topic and he decided to go another way. Mm -hmm. And as frustrating as that decision was for me as the reader, but I also felt how he could be so conflicted. He yeah. loves his wife. Or he deeply loves his wife, but he also deeply loves and I think is worried for Stephen. And once the mother to understand like, no, you think you have this kind of child, but this is who Steven really is. And I so, he, I don't know. I think he knows that if he tells his wife, but I think the fear is that he tells his wife their already strained relationship becomes what it ends up being. Cause she does mm. figure it out. You know, yeah. she gets the beans get spilled. So oh, yes. oh yes. Yeah. And, and, and what happens I think is what he probably feared would happen if he told her. So trying to figure out a way to avoid that inevitability. And that's how you just keep kicking it down the road until yeah. you've lost the ability to, to explain anything to the people yeah. you're leaving behind. Yeah. For sure. And and we see, you know, like even uh, Stephen as a child, and uh, I know we have different versions, <clears throat> uh, editions of this book. So, mm -hmm. but mine is on page 17, where uh, it says, uh, sometimes when the child's heart would feel full past bearing, she must tell him her problems in small stumbling phrases. Tell him how much she longed to be different, longed to be someone like Nelson. She would say, do you think mm -hmm. I could be a man? Supposing mm -hmm. I thought very hard or prayed, Father. And it's like, I think this book did a really good job of even showing, like, at such a young age, how Stephen was struggling with, like, what's going on, you know, with Who me, am you I? know? Yeah, like, and then, like, fighting against what others wanted her to be with what she was trying to figure out what she wanted to be. I mean, I, I think that was really written very well in here. You really understood her own personal uh, frustrations and and suffering and trying to like grapple with who who she is as a person. And I think it goes a long way to show that these are things that we are born feeling and they are not things that are thrust upon us by <laughs> social media which didn't exactly book, but like books or uh, movies, films, your peers like you exactly. are who you are when you come out of this womb mm -hmm. and into this world and how you change is through how you the people around you respond to you right so do you absolutely become a confident happy person who is free to express themselves mm -hmm. do you feel so othered that it leads you to despair like some of the ladies by the end of this book where they just feel like they can't go on mm -hmm. um do you like it's not changing fundamentally who you are at your core. Right, right. So I really like the, that we started so far in the beginning and Absolutely. set this narrative up from the beginning of Stephen's life. Yeah. As Stephen being who she is. Exactly. Period. Period. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, yeah. can we make a side note on the audiobook? Why did she go, Stephen? Stephen. Okay, I'm so glad you brought it. However, that up. the narrator, by the way, says Stephen is so irritating. <laughs> Could you marry me, Stephen? I Steven. just was like, why? Why are we making this choice? But okay, so <laughs> I like I I went with the choice when it was our our friend, the Southern lady, which mm -hmm. was a terrible Southern accent, but like whatever, we're going yeah. with it. But when we got to France and people were still like non-Southern people 
yeah. American Southern people were going, yeah. ski van. Yeah. No, nobody says that. It was a <laughs> bit much. Yeah. I'm glad we were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was pretty comical. Pretty it comical. Was, it was. Yeah, because you'd be in the middle of like some pretty pivotal scenes and you're yeah. like, Steve, Steve Van. Van. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, oh God. that was funny. <laughs> oh, it was terrible. I hated it. Oh. Um, oh my gosh. I don't know. What do you, I mean, I feel like the mother really hurt me because like this idea that like even from birth, like whatever that quote was, she felt like, you know, the, her she repelled at her child at her breast she was repelled yeah. by her own child which yeah. you know one way you could read it like she knew she was different maybe did anna also have some postpartum postpartum i, mean, I mm -hmm. wouldn't she didn't they lose a few children wasn't this like like it didn't it take a while for them to even have oh, yes. Steven, and she yeah. wasn't even they wanted the son they didn't get the son not mm -hmm. only did they not get a son but at the end of the day she realizes she got a freaking lesbian i mean that's probably yeah. a lot for anna to process <laughs> yeah and i think that although the father i think he did a good job um to let her know it's okay that we did not give birth to a boy i still mm -hmm. love you i still love this child but i have a sneaky suspicion that in the back of her mind she may have felt like she let him down by yeah. birthing a girl instead of a boy um so I think some of that was happening there as well. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah. And the mother upset me a little yeah. bit. She, yeah. She really did. She really did. I just, I was trying to feel empathy for her and it was really, really hard for me too. Really hard. I think if it would have been explicitly stated that there were moments, there was there was some postpartum, which I don't know if in 1920s you even had the words to say right. postpartum. Maybe there would be a piece of me that had a little bit of sympathy for the mother for a moment, like when they when they say those words about yeah. uh, the the repulsion at her breast with her mm -hmm. baby at her breast. Maybe I would feel more sympathy for the mother at that moment. But overall, no, I don't have sympathy for the right. mother. Right, right. Their whole relationship. It, it's it's not like she just had these issues and feelings when Stephen was an infant. These are feelings that carried on for their entire mother-daughter relationship. Yeah. And so because of that, it is very hard for me to feel anything for the mother where I would like give her a break. Do you feel like in the beginning, like in her, before she goes off to war mm -hmm. to be an ambulance driver, do you feel like the men around her in general, were more accepting of her than any of the women in her life? Yes. And I thought I, that was really interesting. Yeah. Um, I think I think women are afraid to break social norms, especially mm -hmm. during that time. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that they are willing to find out what the potential backlash may be if they accept someone like Steven. Whereas men don't give a crap. They're like, For you're the a great part. horsewoman. Let's Ex go hunt. Exactly. Like <laughs> you know, they, right. They make little wisecracks and jokes and, you know, it's all good for them. But for women, there are other implications that they are not really willing to risk finding out what they are exactly. Yeah. Like that neighbor friend, um, she's got the, the, the brother that is like her nemesis and uh, like the uh -huh. sister. Yeah. And, when the, she's going, the weak one, right? The yeah, weak they're going one. on. She cries yeah. at everything. And she's going on and on about like, yeah. Stephen, what is your life if you don't have a husband? And I'm like, the bleh. right, exactly. Pretty much great. Uh, like, right. Yep. And, Freedom. But, yeah. But like, those are the norms that she's, I mean, that's what yeah. you're fighting, right? Like, exactly. And I think like some of us are still fighting those things today. Like, think of oh, all like the yeah. childless women that have to defend the fact that they chose to be childless like exactly. i don't believe that i chose to be childless but i've accepted that i'm childless but right. it's still like a weird world to navigate because the world doesn't like you don't have as much value as one of the breeding stack like you're... yeah it's we st it, yeah we still are doing a lot of the social norms today today like, it's crazy it's it is crazy like it's crazy you, you could contribute mm, anyway that's not the point that's not the but point. that's this is where i think Steven's dad did such a good job in building her up to be this independent person, free of 
well, 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 knowing that she wasn't going to have your typical well-respected lady type of mm -hmm. life and he gave her other things to build upon and he nurtured other parts of her that were more important. And again, it's because he fully recognized who his daughter was. And I'm also glad that he left her some money. <laughs> I was going to say, because... we also can't, we can't ignore. No. The fact that she is a, a woman of incredible means. I mean, because he amount, knew there would be no husband, mm -hmm. there'd be nobody to take care of her. Exactly. And oftentimes, men, the fathers, people, especially in England at that time, where you have entailments and primogenitor and all that mm -hmm. crap. I probably said that wrong, but you know what I mean. Where everything ends up going down through the men. It was. Yep. She was honestly lucky to have somebody that made sure that she was independent and could be independent exactly and could live how she wanted to live uh -huh. um and she was lucky to have puddle i mean the fact that she had this Puddle's my heart this secret <laughs> i because i don't I think her. did she ever realize that puddle was a lesbian too i, I feel think like she, she never on, i think she yeah. caught on later but it took her a while because puddle was talking in riddles well because i think puddle is from a generation where you talked in riddles you just yeah you lived very quietly and you understood the potential dangers, maybe mm -hmm. is the way of saying it, of yeah. being out there with your inclinations. Exactly. But exactly. Stephen had the benefit and the privilege of wealth, which does allow you to be to get away with more things that go against social norms than, you know, anybody without means oh, can ever, yes. could ever do. I mean, having means is everything. I mean, it, it, it does determine whether you can really live life on your own terms or not. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, her father really, really set her up well. Uh -huh. And I just keep thinking, my goodness, what if the mom had been in charge? I mean, who knows? I, I guess she just would have been living at home or, may, or maybe not because we saw how that played out later on. I mean, honestly, I think if she didn't have the ability to take charge of her own life, she probably would have met very tragic ends. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, or maybe she would have ended up in like a marriage of convenience. Or that. Most likely that. But I can't see, like, the way her character is, her doing that. No, she was very strong-willed. Because her person would have been Martin, and she was like, oh, no. Yeah. As I thought we just were friends and talked about trees. What are you... <laughs> right, what are you, what are you going what on What are you about? asking, my marriage? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I really, I really liked her personality. I thought she was great. I just could do with a little less of the Jesus, but that was, I think, part of it. I think that mm -hmm. she struggled. I think it's interesting to watch this struggle between having piety and also being other. Mm-hmm. Because they don't go dinner. together. And they are how... in direct conflict with each other. Yeah, and I like that she said that often people like her are religious there was a mm -hmm. whole passage she discusses how people like her are often religious and how there is this struggle to to deal with these two disparate uh, worlds and yep. feelings and and sort of you're always kind of unsettled because right your beliefs and who you are don't seem to to match to up match up mm -hmm. yeah 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 again like these are Ooh. things people still struggle with I, this is why i think this is yes. like this is like canonical feminist lit like yeah. this is not feminist lit but like lesbian lit queer yes, lit absolutely you know like queer people still deal with the struggle of you know having faith but not being fully accepted in their church i mean mm -hmm. these things still happen today it's mm -hmm. that's why I was, again like i was i was always reading i was like we are still dealing with a lot of these issues like these things haven't been like solved and wrapped up nicely with a little bow these are still current issues also this book had me google something because i was like is this a real person when oh the, the older guy yeah i had to google he is that a person. real person who did a lot of yeah. work yeah Inverse yeah, um, I didn't know they call him like the pioneer of sexology and that he is mm -hmm. described as the first gay man in world history. I was like, oh, I would mm -hmm. like to see some of those pamphlets. But um, yeah, I mean, but I think it it shows you like 
I really feel like there's a group of people today that really feel like, you know, like gay is in and it's this new thing. And you're like, no, these people have existed for as long as humanity has existed. Because exactly. They, and, and that is it. They didn't yeah. just pop up because th- some gay book about penguins showed up yep. when they were children. Like, no. Exactly. You, we are who we are exactly and, and i think that's i think that might be why reading this and getting to those random points of racism was mm-hmm. so jarring because so much of this rings so true to today mm-hmm. that i wasn't my head like wasn't in a like 1920s like mindset exactly. for a lot of the time for like sure. reading like reading east of eden every time they were racist i was like yeah, yeah all right like it, I, yeah, I got it. It's it's jarring, but okay. Like it didn't make me stop in my tracks and like send you a right. message and be like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> right, exactly. Yes. Is this the part about the mom? I don't know. Is it? Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So there was that part that there was that part where Sir Philip and Anna, the mother and father, were talking about Stephen, and. Anna was telling him, she says, she says, at times it makes me afraid. I can't tell you why, but it seems all wrong. It makes me feel strange with the child. And he goes into the spill and he's like, um, uh, there's nothing for you to understand, but I like you to trust me in all things. And he says, I've wanted her to have a healthy body. That's why I've let her run more or less wild. But perhaps we better have a governess now, as you say, a French governess, my dear, if you prefer one. Later on, I've always meant to engage a blue stocking, some woman, some woman who's been to Oxford. I want Stephen to have the finest education that care and money can give her. That This is that decision that he made when he could have just mm-hmm. really been honest with her about who Stephen was, but kind of diverted into something else. Basically just saying, just trust me. I know what I'm doing. We're going to get her the finest education but that's still not really having that conversation about, look, this is who our child is. These are the kind of feelings that she's having. These are the thoughts that she's thinking. That was his mm-hmm. opportunity um, to do so. Because yeah, really but- shortly after he dies. <laughs> oh yeah. Spoiler. He dies. <laughs> you know, but you know, I think that he did not, you know, we don't make you know, perfect choices throughout our lives, but he made some really good ones. He made a lot of good ones. Deciding to get his daughter educated in a time where it really wasn't necessary for your daughters to be all that educated Mm -hmm. um, beyond like, how do I run a home? How do I curtsy? How do I walk straight? How do I knit? Have manners. Hey, shut up. I knit. (laughs) Yeah. But you also do other things like work (laughs) and read (laughs) and read. But, um, I mean, I think that he does his best and more than many fathers probably would have done Mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah, for sure. Do we want to talk about what's her lady names? Angela Crosby? Our little Steve Ann? Yeah, because that was a... That treacherous little mix. (laughs) She was something else, wasn't she? Uh, That was an interesting little series of events. I... That situation concerned me because, okay, you want to know what I thought was going to happen? What was the husband's name? Roger? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. I actually thought Roger was going to kill Stephen. Oh, interesting. Yeah, like something about that situation uh, started feeling very, like, wicked to me. Mm -hmm. I got very nervous, and I thought that, or at least t- or try to kill Steven. But I just felt something very wicked in that situation. And I was very nervous uh, because really the emotions were very, very high. Jealousies were high. And I was like, this is like a recipe for a disaster. I was afraid. I think why that didn't go as, as like devious as you planned as you had in your head is because at the end of the day... Um, appearance is everything, right? Especially if you are of a certain class. So even though whatever Angela's MO is for having this whole affair and leading on Steven and all of that, whatever that was, when it finally comes out, Mm -hmm. the most important thing 
is not to shout it from the rooftops. It's right. like damage control. So as much as he may have wanted to ruin her, uh, hurt her, yeah. do anything, it was better to inform the mother mm -hmm. and otherwise keep everything very quiet because yeah. nobody wants that tarnish nobody wants on that their scandal. family. Because not yeah. only is it that Stephen is some sort of, I don't know, deviant, but right. so is his wife, which reflects on very him. poorly and on him, family. right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think and, that and her family. Mm -hmm, I think that's why it still actually didn't go the way that you kind of fear while you're reading it. Yeah, is a saving face means so much, and these are all rather wealthy aristocratic people. Mm -hmm. That means even more to them. Yeah, yeah, that whole thing stressed me out. So. <laughs> I did not like, I want to know, like, what was that lady's MO? She's just like, I want to bang anything that moves. I just, think, I just think she was uh, an adventurous sexual woman. I don't know. I got this like opportunistic vibe from her, but I don't know what she was trying to get out of Steven. Cause it's not like Steven could have protected her. They couldn't have gotten married. I mean, she's quite I mean, clear which, about Could you marry me, Steven? I mean, <laughs> right. She's, she says that. But I do think the allure with her was being wanted, being desired. I think mm -hmm. that was a part of her thing. You know, toying with people, mm -hmm. have people dangling on a string. I just think she was into it. And I think she liked to explore her sexuality. But just fine. No, nothing yeah, wrong with know? exploring her sexuality. But I just feel like she had devious, like, I don't know, there was something... I think because she was so irresponsible in her behavior, it probably made it feel that way. Maybe. She was very irresponsible she, because she's a risk taker. She's yeah. a she She's what I call a dangerous woman. She's, she's a dangerous woman. She does things without really thinking about the implications. I'm a dangerous woman. See oh, yeah. Man. Oh, yeah. Like, it's nothing wrong with wanting to do those things, but, like, you know, you're you're playing with fire. I do think it's very interesting to watch, like, the two major relationships in her life early are, are like her weirdly obsessive <laughs> crush on the maid mm -hmm. Mate, mm -hmm. and then um, her obsession with Angela and mm -hmm. how just obsessive, like she really kind of is and how just uh, Stephen is loving with her entire being, uh, right. these people. And then later when we get to Mary, she's mm -hmm. so much more reserved. But still, so very afraid. Mm -hmm. she's, and that's why she's she doesn't been, want to let Mary out of her clutches. But she's been wounded so badly mm -hmm. up until that point. And we don't see any other infatuations, loves, interests, right. anything between Angela and Mary. So right. we don't know if there were other dalliances here and there. Ooh, dalliances. Mm -hmm. Good word. Ooh, I love that. Um, yeah. But... When she gets to Mary, like you could feel like they're just like riding along in this ambulance and you know that she's into Mary and yep. you know Mary's into her, but the, it, it's it's a much slower fall than the other yeah. two where she just well, plummets I, into. I think one of the differences is that Mary was willing, mm -hmm. right? And there was no Roger. You know, there yeah. were no other distracting factors, really. I'm, Mary just made a decision, you know, yes, I like you too. And mm -hmm. yes, let's, whatever we're doing, let's, let's, let's give it a try. Yeah. And so there was a certain level <clears throat> of um, combativeness that, that she didn't have to deal with. There, there was no fight really to, to, to get her. They yeah. just kind of decided we, we have a thing. We're going to see where this thing goes, but. I don't think she was very worried of losing Mary like she's lost everybody else. And then, you you know, well, you watch sure. when they get to France and they're living in France and they're kind of stuck mm -hmm. in France because uh, they can't live like they do in France at home. Um, and they have this group of other women and people that are like them mm -hmm. and are other like them. Yep. You see how... common it is to live sort of in fear Absolutely. like you're loving just the same way as other people but you're just so afraid of the outside world oh yeah when they go on their little trips to um all the nightclubs and mm -hmm. they and and they take us on a little vignette of all the different nightclubs that you mm -hmm. could go to in 1920s paris mm -hmm. and 
that last that last one where everything just seems very sad yeah and the people seem very broken mm-hmm. in a way like their spirits are broken yeah um I also gave me like Giovanni's rooms vibes when oh, they were doing that. Yeah. When they were in those, when they were in Paris, I had major flashes to like Giovanni's room. Yeah. And like yeah. the struggle to be normal mm-hmm. while other. Yeah. Because it's hard, you know, mm-hmm. when you can't really live freely. You know, you're suppressing parts of who you are, suppressing parts of your life. It's hard to live out loud and be in in and live in secret. You you just can't do it. Mm-hmm. You know, and it makes. I guess if you've been doing it for a long time, it makes your existence so sad and so depressing. Mm-hmm. And then I think that's where the feelings of like hopelessness set in because it's like I can't even live the way I want to live. I really can't be my true self. I'm always hiding. Mm-hmm. You know, dare I go out and just be who I am, then I have a target on my back. So yeah, and there's some amount happiness. yeah, there's some amount of numbing that goes on as well. I mean the drinking and the cocaine use and mm-hmm. all of that. Like there is, it seems like there was in the story at least mm-hmm. some amount of numbing that these characters needed to just navigate. Yeah. Or to maybe feel comfortable enough being outside of their safe spaces being yeah. themselves right numb you just enough for you to live a little bit more freer a little bit mm-hmm. more louder than you normally would mm-hmm. you know just kind of give you the the balls to do it per yeah. se you know were you annoyed at steven for some of the ways that she treated mary not just like at the end but just how she sort of shut mary out so that she could single-mindedly try to like help Mary and provide for Mary, but was also keeping Mary at a distance. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm asking? Yeah. Am I asking that right? <laughs> you are. So I had a lot of complicated feelings about Stephen and Mary because while I don't, I don't want to say that Stephen didn't want to help Mary, but I do feel like there was a fear there that if she let Mary out of her sight too much, she may go and find love elsewhere. Mm-hmm. I, so I don't really feel that it was fully just about protecting her, helping her. I think it was just like, if I just keep her under my wrap, she won't really have the opportunity to fall in love with anyone else or find anyone else. I think yeah. a lot of that had, I felt that. I just feel a lot of her decisions were based upon that fear of losing her. I felt like and, she was afraid of losing Mary, but not maybe because... Of specifically, like at least in the beginning of all of this, mm-hmm. I, fearing that she we he, she would lose her to to somebody else. I felt like she was just afraid of losing Mary because she's lost like everybody she loves. Um, mm. And I mean, Puddle's the one that's like, if you want to protect Mary, mm-hmm. you have to write. Like you have to make this career. You have to provide stability for Mary. Because Stephen's going to be fine, right? Stephen has means. Stephen will be fine. Yep. And Stephen's fine. But Mary will, her reputation is basically like ruined by this. Mm -hmm. And Mary is the one who has everything on the line. So she has to ensure some security for Mary. And I feel like that turned her into her being Stephen, this very like single-minded person that ended up neglecting some of the relationship part of a relationship. For sure. Two things happening, right? Because also with um, Angela, right? Mm -hmm. Angela was saying the same thing. Like you can't really offer me any protection, right? Mm -hmm. So that drive to really get this writing done. Yes, that's part of it. But the other part of it is too, if I become this famous writer, then I'll be more respected. Mm -hmm. And people will accept more of who I really am. So that's, two things tangled up with her drive to really get this book done and to become uh, an an accomplished uh, writer. I wonder if there's also an element that like we're kind of missing because of uh, a lack of understanding and like the laws of the time. Mm, Probably. There is like, Stephen is fine, but Stephen's money will never be Mary's. Mm -hmm. But I wonder if Stephen makes her own money, is that money outside of whatever is like the families? Does that then become something that she can at least bequest to Mary later? Um, should anything occur, I don't I, see. That's, that's what we don't know, right? 
Radcliffe Hall, come back from the dead and let, and let us know. Right. Let us know. Also, have you Good looked question. up any like pictures and stuff about her? She no. Seems, she seems fun. Like, I feel like we would be friends. <laughs> <laughs> she's walking around like basically her top half is like man i mean like right top hat ties severe jackets love it yeah bottom half skirt because we already covered what it is to be wear pants mm -hmm. i mean heaven forbid you wear heavens pants. forbid she's always carrying a dog like in every picture i see oh that's I'm so like, funny we'd be friends she just seems like <laughs> quite the character and um I think she would have been fun to just kind of have in your friend circle. Yeah. I think the conversations would have been very interesting. And very interesting. Dogs. I also yeah. love that the dog got like their own perspective. Yes. The dog was like its own little character in this yeah. story. That shows just how much she loved, loved the, mm -hmm. animals. I mean, you could see it throughout this genuine love of animals and this connection yep. to animals over uh, humans, which I think is what happens with many people that feel right. outside. I mean, it happens whether it's because you're neuro, um, you're not, you're, you're not neurotypical, you're uh, queer, whatever, yeah. whatever puts you sort of on the outside of normal, normalized human connection. I think mm -hmm. often you have this greater connection to other things. Like Absolutely. Animals. And that came out so much in this story. The animals don't judge you. The animals don't care. They just love you. So when she has to put the horse down, I was like, oh yeah, that was sad. But like, I know you had to do it, but did you, you, did, did you have to do it? Probably. Like, I, yeah. I couldn't have, I can't, I, that's like if I had given Turbo his, me no. Yeah. No. I understood it. My little hands wouldn't have been able to like do it. <laughs> I felt like it's like when you go, it's just going to be me and you eye to eye. That's it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I got. I got are, that. are you putting me down, Naomi? <laughs> no. When I go, you're gonna put me down. I mean, you and me, eye to eye, Alyssa, eye to eye. Make, my make last words to you. <laughs> Talking about the last book you read. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you oh. want to talk about the ending of this remarkable little book here? Because I, yeah, I feel like that's where. Well, because there's, there's a couple things that like lost some points here for the book. One is the abrupt racist nature of parts. Oof. But then yeah. also, because I just don't think that they were strictly necessary. Even in 1920, I don't really know if you needed to make those certain right, right. references. But okay. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you do you, boo-boo? Uh, yeah. Racist boo-boo. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I can't undo it now. Right. But, but I feel like that ending was just not the stuff between her and Martin and mm -hmm. Mary. Like mm -hmm. I kind of got all of that, but this like mm -hmm. weird, the final pages with this like weird biblical shouting melodramatic. Oh, I was the, like, what? What? <laughs> we were, we had been going so well. And then suddenly I was, yeah. it felt like a different book. Yes, it did. I had to read it twice. I was like, what are you, what's going on here? Yeah. It was so weird. I did not, I did not enjoy that. It, it was not enjoyable and it confused me. And I was like, I don't know. I don't even know what to make of this whole statement here. Like what, why, why is she having it's like, like a rallying cry and also like, I don't know. It was very strange. <laughs> Why did she suddenly go delusional? I thought she killed herself. Like at first I thought she killed herself because she was seeing all these dead people. And I was like, right. is she dead? Right. Right. And then I was and like, then well, maybe she she's wasn't just dead. so numb <laughs> to what she, because it's like, you put this in action. And I was like, well, maybe it, like, did she just become so numb? Like she just kind of zoned out for a minute after like, realizing have, like, what she a, actually just did? an abrupt psychological break like it's like right i guess that makes sense maybe but like still maybe why is she screaming but he has left us this. forsaken like it's just so weird it was it was, it you was dare very not disown odd. us <laughs> right right i don't get it god she gasped we believe we, we believe told you we believe we have, we have we not have denied, not denied. <laughs> You then rise up and defend us, acknowledge us, oh God, before the whole world, give us all the right of our existence. Like, right? It's like a I big rallying it. I get cry. it that it's you're like, rallying okay. cry for lesbians, but it just right. was 
the tone was so different, different. out of nowhere <laughs> that, it, that it, it was unsettling a little bit. It was. I was just like, what? And you're right. Like, again, I, I wasn't sure. I was like, did she, did she for, murder her? Did she kill herself? Did she just black out? For a minute, I thought she was dead and the dog was on the bed crying. Like that, that is what I thought was happening. Yep. Yep. It was a, it was a very <laughs> odd ending. <laughs> it was an odd ending. But I mean, there is like a battle cry for, for. Queer it, is. So, it is. It I is. It is. I just don't know. In the most ranty, biblical way, yes, very strange. Again, if Radcliffe were still here, this would be. I would like to get like more information. What, what did you? What did you? What were you trying to get at in that last part of the book? <laughs> From my little oh, like poking around on background on Radcliffe Hall, I believe she was also kind of um, religious and dealt with a lot of like the struggle was actually something she really struggled with. Uh, yeah outside of the book like in real mm -hmm. time she, she did struggle with um marrying her religiosity with her i mean it makes sense it makes sense i yeah. completely understand that especially you know during that time i mean religion plays such a big part in people's lives and yeah that was a part of you being a respectable man or a respectable lady so yes. i get it god fearing yeah so let me see your uh cover i really like mine I, I like yours one. too a lot. Oop, there's my camera. I was like, is this puddle on mine? Oh, I wonder. You know, mine's just two little ladies loving each other. Yeah. And a woodcut. I mean, this really was a good, a really, really good book, though. I have lots of things uh, circled and underlined, lots of little notes in here because it's, it's a lot to think about. And uh, the relationships were really deep. I mean, I think that it's really, uh, I loved her more than her struggle with being. Um, a woman loving a woman. I I kind of loved watching her internal struggle to accept her masculinity. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like that's not something that I was expecting going into this because I knew it was like it was like the 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 lesbian classic, right? But I didn't know that it dealt so much with like gender and yeah. how you feel where you are on that specter uh, mm -hmm. specter spectrum, spectrum. Um, that mm -hmm. don't, I got I got ghosts <laughs> on the brain um, <laughs> spectrum uh so I just I found um that 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 was like an interesting find I didn't realize that she was going to be grappling with all of that as well right and I like that I like that that was the discussion because I feel like that is something that's really hard for many people today to understand is that not only do sometimes women want to have sex with other women yeah sometimes women don't feel like them women yeah exactly that's, exactly that's right. okay <laughs> exactly that's right and i did just find that part where puddle was talking to her about basically how she's got to get back to working she's got to make the world respect her mm -hmm. through her through her work well, that's how she ensures As it safety. being a safe refuge for her and her friend. Which, you know, mm -hmm. I understand that too. Puddle was great. I really Puddle was fantastic. Puddle. But I, I was really also sad for Puddle. You know, because you want these people to just live their lives and to be happy. And, you know. We all need a Puddle. We all need a Puddle. But we, we don't need an Anna. Fuck no. We don't need or a an Van Angela. Anna. Steve or an Van. Angela. I like the friend Valerie. <laughs> Yes, Valerie is, I think Valerie, I was reading something, Valerie is actually based off of a real woman, and oh. uh, that's why she's sort of one of the more fleshed out characters. Mm -hmm. like, on I the liked side. her, yeah. And she is like a good um, foil to Stephen, because she's sort of this, Stephen's uh, a lot more like religious, dark, brooding, sad, mm -hmm. and Valerie is this like pagan who's like, you know, everything's fine. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the life she's I mean, she says something. Um, let me see if I can find it in this article. I, I read it somewhere. Oh, shoot. It's I think she says something along the lines of like, the world isn't as dark as it appears to be, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a really important statement mm -hmm. to say to somebody. Absolutely. Even when you feel like everything is is crushing down on you. 
it's important to remember that there are good things out yeah, there. Yeah, and you can find pockets of happiness. Yeah. That's that's that's, that's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah, I really like this. So, you know, audience, Alyssa had talked about this book. I want to say two years ago, she brought it to me. It was mm -hmm. like, we need to read this. And um, so I'm glad we were finally able to make it a TBR lowdown pick. This is a phenomenal book. I think a really phenomenal. important book. I heard um, Eric Carl Anderson talking about it. and I Oh, was he like, really loves this book. I was like, oh, yeah, he really loves this book. Wait a mm -hmm. minute. <laughs> That's yeah. good. So, I mean, it is really fantastic. So it is really, really fantastic. Just be prepared to be like just sucker punched by some racism. Right. And, and just remember what time we're in, you know, where this is this is not 2022 in this book. It's the 1920s. Yeah. But I've such an important book, I think. So good. Well done, Radcliffe. <laughs> if if they were alive today, I'd be trying to get them on this show. That's for damn sure. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Rest in peace, Sir Philip. <laughs> <laughs> I liked him. He I was really a good did dad. Too. I do he like really people was. have good supportive parents. Cause like I feel like it's so hard to see people struggle with any sort of difference or otherness and then also oh, yeah. have just no help at home. That really I breaks know, my it, heart. It's heartbreaking. Like, fictional it's heartbreaking. Or, or reality. It, For sure. It breaks my heart. So For sure. And they had such a lovely relationship. And I just, it was, it was very sweet. Yeah. Everybody needs that in their life. Yeah. Ooh! All right. Yes. That was a good conversation. So I'm glad conversation. we read that. Me that too. That was a good conversation. I'm Me glad too. we finally read it. Me too. It's good. Anyway. It's great. Do you have... A recommendation? Oh boy, do the I! End of the show. Oh boy, do I! <laughs> I'm in love. <laughs> what do you All have? Right. I was listening so, to books you just finished. It's gonna be one of them. Yes, the one I was just talking about uh, the last mm -hmm. couple of days in our chat. This is a book I was in McKay for one of my, you know, shopping sprees, and I was like, "Oh, what is this book? Working for the Devil. This is Working for the Devil by Lilith Saint Crow." And this is book one in the Dante Valentine series mm -hmm. um, from Orbit. And God, I don't, man, I had such a good time reading this book. So Dante has been hired to kill this fugitive named Vardamal Santino. Uh, she's been hired by the devil, by Lucifer. Oh, you can't turn him down. <laughs> this is the job you must take or you will die. And try. <laughs> <laughs> So it is her trying to figure out um, how this is going to happen because uh, Dante had um, an interaction with Santino um, a while ago and he tried to kill her. So this is already complicated. She's also got this, what do they call him? It's this demon. They call him, like he's her demon familiar. Um, he's part of Lucifer's crew. I want to do um, familiar. Yeah. And so like they're working this, you know, case together and all kind of things unfold. And I don't want to tell what it is because I think that it's a big part of the story. And I, this is going to like continue throughout the series, but man, when I tell you, I think I have like a new girl crush on an assassin and her name is Dante Valentine. I'm telling you, this was so fun. Also, this has an audiobook like no other, okay? It's not like your regular audiobook. It's mm -hmm. like a movie for your ears. I've heard her say this like 17 times in the last day. And Seriously. It's, it's not like chapter one. No, it's like a movie. Like it's a full on cast, sound effects. Like it's the whole thing. It's a whole production. And it is amazing. It's amazing. Do they use dialogue tags? Or do they not say the dialogue tags? Yes, they do. They it's say amazing. them. I was going to say, because it sounds like Dune. Because like in Dune, they don't use the dialogue tags. They read it to you like it's a script. So it doesn't say like, blah, 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 he said. It's just like, blah, 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 blah. And then the next person comes in and it's like, blah, 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 blah. Oh, no, blah. no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Let me think. I feel like it goes in and out. But it's so smooth. Mm -hmm. And so in that case, 
I tried to read along, but it's actually hard to read along to that kind of a production. Mm -hmm. So I ended up just listening to it. And it's just, it's, it's, it's fantastic. And the ending was amazing. And the setup for book two was amazing, which I've already started book two. And this is just, uh, just a jewel. I never heard of this author, never heard of the series. I just saw it in McKay and picked it up. I love how happy this makes you. Well, let me tell you what made me even happier, right? So then I go to Goodreads and I click on the author name. Does she have a crap ton of other series? Yes, she does. She's I'm in getting heaven, ready folks. to be in Lilith St. Crow world. I'm here for it. It was so fun. I feel like we both need to get on the Orbit list. <laughs> for real. So anyway, like I get random books from Orbit, but I'm not like on the list. That's Working for the Devil. This is book one in the Dante Valentine series by Lilith St. Crow. Yes, I need to get on Orbit's list. I have a lot of Orbit books. We both do. I definitely mm -hmm. have more to Orbit. We both have a lot of Orbit books. Yeah. Uh, I, because it's spooky season and we are live and deep in the deep in the spooky mm -hmm. times i'm gonna give you a junji though because i've been talking Ooh. about i've been talking about manga with the new pe the new person at work a lot so it's in, it's on my did they read it too yes they did when they were kids oh. so, so now we have yeah anyway uh i can dork out at work so gaio that's the one i'm picking for you for spooky season because this is one about the fish people or the fish oh. things that come up on land and it's just oh. like this weird smell that's like everywhere and then people get like infected and it Yikes. ravages Japan and Yikes. it's linked to some like military um, experiments back from World War II and it's oh, just... Oh, these it's, images are fantastic. It's just grotesque and wonderful and weird and every... Ma'am, every time... <laughs> just having a moment every time like they talk about like the smell i just <laughs> i just do you gag old, a little like Whoa. i hear that old song in my head um uh that like what's that smell like is it witchy woman oh oh wait a minute you know you know what i'm oh, talking my, about it's right there yeah it's right uh, but anyway so that's all yeah. i think about is that but then like i mean just think about how terrifying it is for like sharks to grow mechanical legs and end up on the land that's crazy that's terrifying that's it's absolutely so crazy terrifying. oh my gosh and i just i love Junji ito because like the stories are so wild that you just kind of suspend your disbelief and go with it like you are just like yeah all right this is fish, well, yeah, fish, same fish, thing fish, suspend like, all the disbelief yeah go sometimes you can't because like I feel like sometimes with horror and stuff, they just, I don't know. Some, there's something that's going on that it just doesn't allow me to disconnect. But these mm. are just so outrageous that you're like, all right, yeah, show me what you got. Yeah. <laughs> Sharks on land. Let's you go. You are living your best manga life. That's what I'm going to say. Am. You are just all up in the zone there. I know. I'm loving myself. Yeah. <laughs> I just finished the one yesterday, too, that was like, that gave me like, I, I, I think it's going to give me Den of Vipers vibes. Oh. But like vampire Den of Vipers vibes? Because there are smutty manga. There, Oh, yeah, there is. Because what's that one? Um, Dicks everywhere. What is it? Um, <laughs> uh, what's the name of it? The people talk about it all the time. It's I don't know. It's going to be later. But at some point, I'm going to have to go down the smut manga road. So. Yeah. Now, when we were at McKay last, did you look in the manga section? I don't remember if you yeah, did Yeah, but I didn't. Like, I was looking for Tomei. And I don't think they had it. Okay. Um, what is the section large? Because I never go down that aisle, so I don't know. It's like one row of stuff. Okay. And I think it's pretty, I don't know. It, it might be, it might be. Uh, is that it? I think that's it. Dick Fight Island. All right. I'm going to have to try to find that. <laughs> um, I think that's the one. Thank you. I, I think with manga, especially used manga it's really going to be like hit or miss on what you can um, find okay because you gotta ma remember there's like so many volumes so yeah yeah so and i wasn't really like as deep into different series when we yeah left. so now now i am <laughs> so <laughs> well just be prepared for the next time you visit me right we're still gonna go to mckay we're still gonna go to mckay however we're going to venture 
to Baltimore, Maryland. You've never taken me for to this because I don't go there. That is like <laughs> almost two hours away from me. But there's a bookstore there that kind of looks amazing, okay. and it has Naomi and Alyssa written all written over all it. over it. Now I don't. It's, it's a used bookstore, but you know, is it like McKay used bookstore prices? I don't know, but I think it's worth the adventure. I'm looking this so, up, by the way. Be prepared um, for that. Big Fight Island is a Japanese manga comic created by blah 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 blah. We're uh -oh. gonna have to find this. <laughs> her, her wheels are churning. They're a churning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So we need to plan a visit because I have so many books that need yeah. to go to McKay, and I still yeah. have like thirty dollars in credit from the last time I saw. Me, I think I have like forty dollars in store credit. So, um. Yeah, because when I went the other week, I think I, I think I traded in like seventy books. I, like it I was a I lot. Traded in so many. Yeah, it was it was a lot. So, anyway. but yeah, be ready for our. This will be our springtime adventure. <laughs> yes, we had to pick a time to go down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so it's October. Our read for this month for the book club is "There There" by Tommy Orange, which I'm going to be mm -hmm. starting this evening after Kate and I go down our rabbit hole of watching The Flash on Netflix. Um, and yeah, I'm excited about that read. That's another book we've talked about for quite a mm -hmm. while. So we're happy to have that be our October read. For yeah, the I'm month. very curious about it. I know it's got a mm -hmm. lot of um, good reviews. So yeah, very curious yeah. to read that one. Very much so. Yeah. So, all right. Well, this was a fantastic conversation. It was a great book. Of course, it was a fantastic conversation. It, indeed it was. Indeed it was. All right. Anyway. Thanks for tuning in, folks. We're out of here. Bye. Bye.